Hi guys, today I'm making a video on the Sandhoff lilies. And for those of you who follow me on social media, you will have seen I've posted some video and photo content from there that has blown up and got millions of views. Um, and a lot of people have been commenting on it saying these are CGI or they AI generated photos and, and videos. So I decided to make this video about my trip there last year. And you can decide at the end if you think it's AI or not. Guys, I'm here at Sandhof Lily Farm. You can see behind me the lilies are in full bloom. There's lots of water. Um, this is quite an impulsive decision. We raced up last night, left at 10 p.m., uh, got here at about midday, and now we're finally out here shooting the lilies. So really great to be out here this year shooting the lilies. It's my second time doing so, and it's a spectacular sight to see with tens of thousands of lilies. You can't even capture the scale of how many lilies there are something really special to witness when you out here and manage to do that. So yes, enjoy my pictures and see the videos and see what we're getting up to. So if you've never heard of the Santorf lilies, basically they are a species of lily that grow in Namibia in a very arid region and they bloom in a pan. So a pan, for those of you who don't know, I don't know if that's a very South African or African term, is a very big flat area, generally muddy or sandy, um, and it can fill up with water and make like a massive shallow pool. So the bulbs are buried deep underground and if there's enough water, between 15 and 30 centimeters of water in the pan, then the lilies will bloom and they will grow and sprout and uh, produce flowers. So what makes it really special though, is that it happens in hundreds of thousands of lilies, just on the grand scale of it is immense to see. And that makes it really special. And then the second thing is because it's so remote and these lilies only bloom for about five to eight days, getting there in time to see it is incredibly rare and they don't bloom every year. So you can't predict, oh, I'm going to go see the lilies. They only bloom if there's enough water in the pan. And this can sometimes go for like four, five, six, seven years when there's no rain, because Namibia is one of the driest places in the world, that you can go for an incredibly long time without seeing any of the lilies. And then when it does rain and the lilies bloom and you manage to get there and everything um, comes together, it is incredibly special to go and witness this event. Okay, so the reason they are called Sandhoff lilies is because they are found on a farm called Sandhoff Farm, and that's where they get their name Sandhoff lilies. Their real name is Crinum pallidosum. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. I'll put it in the description uh, for those of you who want to look it up and see what they are. They're also commonly referred to as a bushveld flay lily. So hopefully the botanists who are watching are interested in flowers. That's um, <clears throat> what they're called. So the farm is located about 40 kilometers outside of an incredibly small town in Namibia called Malta Hare. And this is about in the south central part of Namibia. So you do have to travel a little bit to get to this place as well. And this also makes it quite remote um, to get to the area. Generally, the lilies bloom in between January and February months. Um, Namibia has a summer wet season, which is from November till March. And if they get enough rain on the farm, then they will announce that the lilies are going to bloom in a few days. And then you have a very short window, two to three days to get there because you want to get there when the lilies start blooming. After 
near the end of the cycle of the blooming cycle they get very wilted and, and droopy so you want to try and get there as early as you can when the lilies start to bloom to get them nice and pokey and uh, really nice to shoot so i've been fortunate enough to shoot the lilies twice once in 2021 and again last year in 2023 and i went in 2021 i was there for one day had incredibly windy conditions very terrible conditions for shooting and I was also very late um, to getting there so a lot of the lilies had wilted but I did manage to get one or two images from that shoot. However last year I was incredibly lucky I was already going on a trip to Namibia with a few friends of mine that you'll probably see in a few of the pictures and in the videos that I'll be showing and we were going on a trip to go and explore Namibia and take photos and have a look around and we got wind that the lilies were going to be blooming literally the day before we were supposed to leave so we basically changed our whole trip um, one of our friends flew down a day earlier from Joburg and we left a day earlier um, and drove almost through the night I think we left at about midnight um, or one in the morning and we literally drove through the night taking turns driving and went straight to the lilies and we managed to get there at the absolute perfect conditions I've never seen conditions like this before or in any other photos of it um, it was incredibly still on the one morning and we got these beautiful reflections and we were the only people there shooting it it was very special from a photography point of view as well as from a personal experience point of view it was, it was very special to know that you were experiencing something that not many other people have been able to experience <laughs> talk a little bit now about photographing the lilies and what to expect if you ever get a chance to go and shoot them so when shooting the lilies um, particularly to get the reflection shots what you need to realize is that the pan is about 15 to 30 centimeters deep with water so it's not very deep the water is about this deep sometimes maybe up to your knee but nothing higher than that um, so it's very shallow and you can just go out and slowly wade through the lilies uh, with your tripod and your camera on your shoulder so the thing you need to remember though is that the mud was quite slippery so you have to be very careful not to to slip and then obviously fall into the mud with your camera and secondly if you walked too quickly through you would create a lot of ripples going out and you wouldn't get the reflections and it would take some time for them to settle down again so you needed to like kind of do this like slow glide shuffle through the mud so that you could feel if there was a hole um, and so you didn't slip and then also they didn't create a lot of um, reflection ripples sorry um, through and disturb the water so you wanted to have that water nice and still so that you could get those reflections of the lilies so the farm is open throughout the day from sunrise to sunset and you can go any time during the day we found a lot of the tourists and visitors that came came sort of mid-morning till lunchtime and then went back and that's not the best time to shoot at all the lilies great to go and see them then but you want to try and be there at sunrise or sunset so it's nice and hot in namibia about 40 degrees there in the summer so you get these big storm clouds that build up in the afternoon so if you want very dramatic um, shots with these very moody clouds and storms building up on the horizon as well as maybe getting some nice light cracking through and reflecting off the clouds afternoon is great for those shots but from what i found from being there the afternoon is generally when it is quite windy so you don't get those reflections because there's a bit of wind and ripple on the water and you're not seeing the flowers being reflected in the water so because of that sunrise is generally the best time to get the reflections what's also nice is i found the light is really nice in the sunrise nice and soft particularly if you have the belt of venus getting those very soft pink hues and blues complement very nicely with the pinks and whites and greens of the lilies and then generally it is very still in the mornings and you can get those beautiful reflection shots so you can shoot sunrise sunset um, but I prefer sunrise at this particular location also a lot less people there at sunrise so you have a lot um, of time alone um, shooting the lilies <music> Thank you. 
So the lilies are located on a 700 hectare farm or pan area, which is difficult to describe, but it is simply massive. It takes like half an hour to drive almost from one end to the other end of the pan. And this is what I found incredibly difficult to capture um, using a camera was the sheer scale of the lilies. So you can obviously see in the images that the, the lilies in the foreground and then there's like you trail off to lots of lilies in the background. But you don't see the lilies that keep going on and on and on behind those lilies um, all the way to almost as far as the horizon. It's, it's incredible to see the pure scale of it. Um, so that was very challenging and very difficult. Also because it was in a pan, a pan is generally on a very flat area. It was, there were no height or gradient or hills where you could look off into the distance. So very difficult to shoot in terms of showing the scale. But instead of focusing on the wide angle, I tried to shoot a lot more intimate shots. So I went with more of a mid-range lens and focused on intimate landscapes. So I really tried to focus on getting some um, intimate scenes with the 24 to 70 mil, getting nice and tight in on the lilies, highlighting the colors, creating nice depth and then obviously focusing on those reflections in the water as well. So shooting with the tripod was also quite a challenge. Um, I only used the tripod for one or two shots and I ended up just ISOing up and then shooting handheld because you want to get very close to the water when you're shooting um, so that you can get the nice symmetry between the flower and the reflection. So I used my screen, I flipped my screen out and I got nice and low to the water um, focus and then we're shooting like that which is which is quite nice so having the flip out screen being able to look down and not having to be at eye level also was a huge plus when shooting the lilies so i hope you enjoyed this video on shooting the santorf lilies and you can see that they are a very real place and they're very real in namibia and you can go and see them if you are lucky enough if they are blooming and you can get there in time it is definitely something i highly recommend going and seeing and taking pictures of mm -hmm.